Now I do take criticism very serious. Well, at least until Top Gear calls me and offers me to do this sort of thing here for crazy money. But I have to say, when I read on a forum that somebody assumed that I might be a secret brand ambassador for Porsche, I was like, well, maybe I have to be even more authentic. Even though if I was a brand ambassador for Porsche, you would probably see videos of a Boxster Spider and the GT3 RS on my channel. But let's start talking about the Panamera. And I have to say, to be honest with you, I've not really been interested in this car and I've not really driven it a whole lot before this test because these super sedans are not something that usually does excite me a lot, if I'm honest with you. Yes, they are awesome to drive long distance on the Autobahn, but they are also usually very far away from the kind of driver's cars that I'm interested in. And that might just be the turning point of this story here, because the Panamera is the very car that I think has changed the way we look at cars from this segment forever. You really have to applaud people who spend an hour on a board car from a dealership to come up with 5 things they love and hate about it for a video just to distract from the fact that they can't drive properly and don't have the roads to really judge the car's dynamics. A comment that still makes me laugh, but couldn't be more true in the case of this Panamera Turbo. Frankly, if you haven't experienced one of these at 100 kph, through some corners on a winding road, or experienced this car's acceleration between 200 and 250 on the German Autobahn, I don't think you will get an understanding for what makes the Panamera such a special car. And I would say the same to people that want to discuss the way this car looks here with me, because this car does have something that not too many other cars have, and that's presence on the road. Drive one of these on the German Autobahn, and people will move out of your way very, very quickly, actually. So I don't like it because it has a Porsche badge on it, but because it's something totally different that does set a statement on the road. By now you probably wonder what 520 horsepower and 770 Nm from a 4.8 liter twin turbo V8 in a 2 ton Porsche sedan with active all wheel drive, adaptive air suspension and 7 gears of PDK dual clutch transmission feel like to drive. Well, I talked about something I call Porsche DNA in my McCann turbo review at the very beginning of this year. And no, the Panamera doesn't feel like a 911 or Cayman. But there are certain elements that clearly make it feel like a Porsche to me. I could list these things and give you in-depth impressions, from the driving position to how beautiful it rides and steers, to the perfection of its whole power plant, and just simply end with the sheer speed of this thing. But by then half the viewers of this video have left YouTube already, because nobody sticks to a 15 minute car review anymore. Instead I can keep things very simple and tell you that the Panamera confronts the laws of physics much like a 911. And if you think about it, that does make it a 2 Porsche. Now, German people love statistics and numbers, so let me give you a few facts. The Panamera Turbo S being the strongest Panamera model has left the Nürburgring Nordschleife in 7 minutes 52 seconds. That's only 10 seconds slower than a Cayman GT4 that was tested by the same magazine. In another test, a Panamera GTS equipped with Porsche Dynamic Chassis Control, PDCC, 
Porsche torque vectoring, PDV and carbon ceramic brakes was achieving higher cornering speeds on the Hockenheim F1 track than a 991 GT3 911. <laughs> so if you still think you have to talk about body roll in your Panamera review doing 35 miles per hour on a back road, <laughs> I really don't have words for you. Even on the mounted winter tires, I felt like I stayed miles beyond the Panamera's limit most of the time. There's a real sense of connection between the driver and car that I've never experienced in a big sedan like this ever before. The Panamera feels extremely rigid and solid, so I ended up keeping its suspension in the firmer of the three settings at all times. Of course you can simply cruise at normal speeds, enjoy your favorite music through the amazing Burmester audio system, with the performance exhaust tuned down to the quiet setting and just have a normal relaxed drive in the adaptive sport seats. But it really is a spirited drive that will change your opinion about the Panamera forever. As a reviewer, you have to capture what makes a car special for you. You have to capture a car's soul if you want to say so. And <laughs> trust me, sometimes that's not that easy with all these over-engineered, super-fast speed machines that are very interesting from a technical point of view, but for me sometimes lack something that makes them inspiring to drive, if you understand what I mean. So that thing that makes the Panamera special to drive for me is that by now I've completely lost awareness of the fact that I'm driving a big sedan. This car gives you a confidence that not too many other sports cars that I've driven can match actually. And I'm still driving a big sedan that's over 5 meters long. That's just astonishing for me. This confidence and trust in the car is what defines driving a modern Porsche for me. There are a thousand other things I could think of and I might have given away a few of them in my other reviews. But for me that's the key element and what makes all their cars so much more fun to drive than others. Yes, the infotainment system is totally outdated and yes, I've never been a big fan of the center console design that the Panamera introduced to all new Porsche cars. Behind the wheel, it doesn't matter for me, because they are real driver's cars. And maybe you have to be a real driver or German fanboy to fully understand and appreciate the engineering and soul that has to go into a big sedan like the Panamera to make it drive like a Porsche.